Strega Nona's Magic Lessons. Bambalona, the baker's daughter, was angry. Every day, summer, fall, winter, and spring, she had to get up before the sun to bake the bread. Then, piling the loaves on her head, she went to deliver them. But her work wasn't finished. Rushing back to the bakery, she had to mix the flour and salt and water and yeast and set the dough to rise for tomorrow's bread. Don't forget, her father the baker would say, to make the cookies and the bake of the cakes. And remember, Bambalon, not to clean up everything spick and span. I'm going now to see my friends. And off he would go to sit all day in the square of the little town in Calabria. One day, Bambalona said, Papa, there is too much work to do. I need some help. Get up earlier, her father said. But I'll get up now before the sun, said Bambalona. And I'm the last one in town to get to bed. That's the way things are, her father said as he went out the door on his way to the square. And don't forget, he called back, you will have a wedding cake to make. That did it. Bambalona dusted the flour from her hands and took off her apron. I'm going to change the way things are, she said. I'll go see Estreganona. She's so wise. She'll help me. I think I know how to help you, Streganona said after hearing Bambalona's sad tale. So many people come to me with their troubles. I could certainly use some help. Why not to stay with me and I will teach you my magic? Oh, Streganona, said Bambalona. Thank you. We'll start today, said Streganona. Now... Big Anthony, who worked around the house and in the garden for Streganona, was listening. He was always listening to what other people were talking about instead of working. Oh, Streganona, he shouted, running into the house. Me too. Uh, teach me your magic too. Oh, Anthony, Streganona said with a smile. I oh, can't do that. Oh, why don't you go and milk the goat? Now, Big Anthony was the one who was angry. I'll show Strega Nona, he muttered. I'll just go and work for the baker now that Bambalona has a left. Down the big hill, Big Anthony ran. The baker hired him on the spot. The first thing you do is a mix of the dough the baker told Big Anthony. Put in the, this so much of flour, this so much of salt, this so much of water, and this so much of yeast. He looked hard at Big Anthony's smiling face. Do you understand? The yeast makes the dough rise. Now mix it right away, and by the time I get back at six o'clock, the dough will be ready to make into loaves. Si, sí, senore, yes, sir, Big Anthony said. The baker walked out the door and toward the square. I'll just look at everything first, said Big Anthony, poking around. Cookies! He ate one, then another. Cakes! He ate one, then another. Pig Anthony ate them all. In fact, he was still eating when the clock in the square struck four. Mamma mia, said a Big Anthony. I forgot to mix the dough. It won't rise in time. Ah, I know. The yeast makes the dough rise. I'll just put in a lot more of that, and the dough will rise much faster. I'll still have time for a nap, he said when he got through. He sat down and promptly fell asleep. 
What a sight the baker saw when he returned. Out, shouted the baker. What's the matter, big Anthony? asked Signora Rosa. The baker threw me out. Now I have no job, he answered. And it's Stregonona's fault. I never would have left her house if she had let me learn to be a strega. Silly goose, said Signora Rosa. Who ever heard of a man being a strega? All of a sudden, Big Anthony's eyes lit up. And he ran off. To cure a headache, you must first fill the bowl with water, Stregonona was telling Bambalona. Next, you add a few drops of olive oil. Then you say these are magical words. Knock, knock, knock. Stregonona went to the door. Oh, Stregonona, said a tall girl standing there. All of my life I wanted to learn your magic. Will you teach me, please? Santo cielo, dear me, said Streganona. What is your name, my girl? Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, Antonia, said the girl. Why do you want to learn my magic, Antonia? Streganona asked. Oh, so that I can help people, said Antonia. Ever since I was a little girl, I've wanted to become a strega. Ah, in that case, said Strega Nona, come a right in. This is Bambalona. She is learning my magic too. Bambalona stared at Antonia and then at Strega Nona. How a nice uh, two girls to teach, Streganona said. She smiled at Bambalona and then she began. To learn the magic and to practice it well, she said, you must learn to see and not to see. You must learn to remember and to forget, to be still and to be busy. But mostly, you must be faithful to your work. Do you understand, my dears? See, si, Streganona, said Bambalona. No, no, said Antonia. When are we going to learn how to do the magic things? In time, said Streganona. Now well, let's uh, practice some of the magic words. Repeat in the right order after me. Soon, Bambalona said all of them by heart. Antonia kept mixing them up. Bambalona learned the cure for headaches. Antonia didn't. Bambalona learned to make love potions. Antonia didn't. Bambalona learned how to get rid of warts. Antonia didn't. Bambalona, said Streganona, I think you are ready now to learn more powerful magic. This is a special book. It is very ancient and contains many magic secrets. Tomorrow we will begin with it. Oh, grazie, Streganona, said Bambalona. Me too, Streganona, asked Antonia. Not yet, Antonia, said Streganona. You have other things to learn. That night, while everyone slept, Antonia crept into Streganona's house. Bambalona thinks she's so smart, said Antonia. I'll just read that book tonight, and tomorrow I'll surprise her and Streganona. The next morning, Antonia was looking very tired. Antonia, said Streganona, watch and listen. Come, Bambalona, we will start. Wait, wait, shouted Antonia. I have a surprise. I know some real magic. Watch me turn that iron kettle into a golden one. Are you sure, Antonia, said Streganona, frowning. 
Yes, oh yes, said Antonia, beginning to mutter some strange sounding words. But she stopped. Wait, I remember now, she began again. Be careful, Antonia, warned Bambalona. Magic can't be fooled with. I've got it now, Antonia said. She muttered more words. Suddenly, there was a bright flash, some smelly smoke, and the iron kettle was still there. But Strega Nona wasn't. Instead, where Strega Nona had been standing was a nice, fat toad. Now we'll see what you've done, cried Bambalona. Oh no, shouted Antonia. Oh help, help, somebody, save Strega Nona, what have I done? Strega Nona warned you to be careful with magic. Now she's gone forever, Bambalona said. Strega Nona, wept Antonia, picking up the toad. Forgive me, forgive me, please. Bambalona, you're so clever. You're so smart. Please change her back again. I promise I'll never play with magic again. I can't change that toad into Strega Nona, said Bambalona. But I can change Antonia into Big Anthony. Bambalona pulled off Antonia's kerchief, and sure enough, there was Big Anthony. Oh, uh, I'll never learn, howled Big Anthony. I'll never learn. Oh, Strega Nona, Strega Nona, what have I done to you? Perhaps, said Bambalona, if you really promise to never ever play with magic again, that will bring Strega Nona back. Do you really think that will work? said Big Anthony, sobbing. It's a worth a try, said Bambalona. Big Anthony put down the toad. He closed his eyes tight and put his hand over his heart. I promise, I really promise that as long as I live, I will never play with magic again. Just a please a bring a strega nonna back. There was another bright flash, some smelly smoke, and presto, Strega Nona was back. Where am I? said Strega Nona. Oh, am I in my little house? Uh, whatever happened to me? Hello, Bambalona. And why, a uh, uh, big Anthony, what are you doing here? Where is a uh, 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 sweet Antonia? Tell her, Big Anthony, said Bambalona. Oh, oh, Strega Nona, said Big Anthony, falling on his knees. He told Strega Nona what he had done. He was so busy crying and talking, he didn't see the nice fat toad hopping past him out the door. And so, uh, Strega Nona, please, he said. If you would take me back, I, I promise to be good. I'll do all my chores and never play with magic again. All right, Anthony, said Strega Nona, smiling. But before you go back to work, change your clothes. You're wearing Signora Rosa's nicest dress. And that's the end. Well, that big Anthony was at it again. Do you think that he learned his lesson this time? I guess we'll have to see next time we read another one of these Straganona books. I hope you notice some of those clues in the pictures to tell you what was really going on and who was really the one playing a trick. All right, I hope you enjoyed this story. Until next time, goodbye.